Welcome to Close Up on America's Business, the program that takes you inside some of the most unique and successful companies in America. I'm Janice Marie. On each edition of our show, you have the opportunity to meet some of the most innovative business leaders in the country today. You'll find out what their products, services, technologies, and business models can do for you, and what they're doing to change our world and to change the way we do business. Most people don't realize it, but the largest organ in the human body is your skin. And in today's ever-present quest to retain your youthful appearance, the proper care of your skin is critically important, especially facial skin. After all, the first thing people see when they look at you is your face. And here in the offices of Abadir Associates in Rybrook, New York, just north of Manhattan, a unique mother and daughter team of dermatologic cosmetic surgeons specialize in the medical care of the skin with such treatments as surgical dermatology, Botox, actual cosmetic surgery, and a host of other treatments all designed to care for the skin and in effect improve one's overall appearance. To learn more about the importance of cosmetic skin treatments, we spoke with the two doctors who head this team, Dr. Dale Abadir and her daughter, Dr. Michelle Abadir. Both my daughter and I are physicians. We have formal training in dermatology and our boards are in dermatology. And the types of things we do are surgical, a lot of skin cancer work, um, skin cancer screening, biopsying, suspicious lesions, uh, treating various types of skin cancer, malignant melanomas, basal cell carcinomas. Apart from that, we do a great deal of cosmetic work with patients who don't like the aging process. These are young people, relatively young, well, 40s, 50s now, who are staying very fit and jogging and going to the gym and they look great and uh, they don't like those little lines that appear in their face. They don't like to look different from what they used to or how different from how they're physically feeling. So many of those people come in for their often minor things like a Botox injection, a filling injection, the other types of things we do are helping people with scarring from surgery, from acne, from um, injuries, because people who really, you know, they can come in feeling horrible about themselves, like as if they want to crawl under the next table or something. And then after the skin gets smoother and nicer and they're feeling so good about themselves, you see the same person walking in with brighter colors and a jauntier step and so much more confident and just doing much better in their whole life. There truly have been dramatic changes and increases in, in what you can do for clients though, haven't you? Well, when I started practicing back in 1973, it was basically excisions, dermabrasion, chemical peels. Now since then we got the injectable fillers so you can fill in dents and dings and uh, wrinkles and whatever. Later on lasers started to be developed so you could actually laser the skin to tighten it and smooth it. Then Botox of course hit the scene in the 90s and then moving forward we now have a uh, gadget we call Thermage or Thermacool which actually shrinks the skin without surgery. More recently we had thread lifts, now they're kind of fun. There's just been endless, endless things. People tend to be shying away from surgery. You know, they would rather do something with less risk, not the scarring, certainly minimal downtime. The thing that got me really interested in this field was watching my mother practice dermatology, especially the surgical part. The other thing that really got me interested in this field is that a lot of it is investigative and it's um, a great way to exercise your mind, especially in the medical field. And dermatology touches on everything, all aspects of medicine, from things that require surgical repair um, to things that are have underlying um, immunologic problems, underlying hormonal problems. So it's very, very much an investigative field. And that's kind of what I liked about it. It's very versatile too. You can do medicine, you can do surgery, you can do cosmetic work, um, 
Um, so it's extremely versatile compared to a lot of other things. You know, you're very interesting. This is a mother-daughter practice. It's, it's kind of rare. What's it like? This practice is really, I think, a lot about 50% medical and 50% surgical. And my mother is mostly all surgical and all cosmetic. A lot of injections, a lot of treatments like intense pulse light, um, laser peels, microdermabrasion, acid peels. So, you know, some of that's kind of surgical, but it's not all surgical. And then the other half of this practice is largely surgical because it's uh, focusing on skin cancer. And a lot of the repairs that we do for skin cancers are plastic surgical repairs. So for me, the surgical end of it is 50% skin cancer, 50% cosmetic. Um, and then I have a whole other section in which I do medical dermatology. So it's really been great. We've been very, very lucky. I saw myself aging and I saw there was a tiredness about me that was beginning to appear. And inside I wasn't tired, but my facial expressions were very tiring. So I came here just to talk to Dr. Michelle. And from talking, um, she suggested some procedures and um, options that wouldn't be drastic because I didn't want to look phony. I still wanted to be able to smile. I still wanted you know, my face to have the features um, and expressions that I had. And I was reluctant to have surgery. I really didn't want to have to go under the knife for any reason. So we did a little Botox and uh, then from there we decided to proceed with a little bit more of a filler. Are you satisfied? Yes, I'm very satisfied. Um, I didn't feel compelled to go do something more drastic. I didn't feel compelled to um, search for more and more. It was something that was very subtle. Um, do I still have some left? Yes, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not supposed to look 20 years old. You know, I'm supposed to look 50 years old. And it gives me the confidence to know that I'm, I'm looking good and that I'm maintaining myself. I exercise, I eat correctly. But sometimes, you know, the gravity and aging, you can't do anything about. This helped that. And that's what I wanted. I just wanted the, the youthful part to come through. Our role here with skin is to make everybody's skin look younger, alive, and make them look better. And people come in, especially young girls that have skin problems. They have hair, they have acne, they have you know, all kinds of skin problems. And the Abadiers take very good care of them, and they really get their self-confidence back from coming to this office in a very short time. We have products here that can really rejuvenate the skin and repair the skin as opposed to just give the appearance of a smoother skin. They're uh, basically stronger than you can find over the counter because a lot of the products that you will buy over the counter in department stores cannot really go deep enough into the skin. They're not allowed, let me put it that way, to have percentages that a physician's office can. And the, the big thing is that there's, there's more than just appearance here. You're getting preventive skin care, which is also something that's very important. You're not just getting something that's sort of doctoring it up. You're getting something that's actually clinically helping it, helping and, the skin. And do you think these products really benefit? They work? Absolutely. I try everything, and it does work. It really does work. In 1989, I got the chicken pox. I had a few small depressions from chicken pox, and I always had perfect skin. So I sought out a local dermatologist. He said he could fix those chicken pox marks by injecting silicone. After six months, I developed silicone granulomas. I actually look like um, an HIV patient with purple protrusions on my face, and I couldn't cover it with makeup. How did it impact you and, and affect your daily life? If I were born looking like that, I think the, there would be no adjustment. But having had a normal looking face and not being disfigured, it was devastating to my self-esteem. But I have, a, I have a strong personality and I, uh, I went to work um, and in between I sought out help from different cosmetic and plastic surgeons. And I went to approximately 40 to 50 cosmetic and plastic surgeons 
in the tri-state area in New York City. They told me they would get back to me, and I'm still waiting for the call. They told me they would think about options for me, and I, I assume they're still thinking. But then I called one doctor's office in Westchester County, and she said to me, I can't help you, but I think I know someone who may be able to help you. And she gave me Dr. Dale's number. In September 1994, I set up a consultation with Dr. Dale Abadir, and she said she could help. She would try to help. And about a week or two later, she proceeded to uh, do excisions. And as she stated, it was like cutting out a cancer to her. And we actually have an anniversary this year. I'll be with her 13 years. It's obvious that she's a very talented and skillful uh, cosmetic surgeon, but she's personable, uh, she's dedicated, she had perseverance with me, and she has helped me very much in terms of my, obviously my physical appearance, but also emotionally. It's also gratifying to know that there are people like Dr. Dale out there who can and, and are willing to help. I'm enjoying the fact that I can treat anybody from the age of zero to 100. I like the fact that it's versatile. I can solve a rash problem for somebody, and I can make somebody you know, fill some lines in, or acne scars, even more importantly. And I like the cosmetic end of it, because I can come in, and I, I usually am able to make people feel good, and um, they feel better about themselves. They're happy. They're happier. I've had people go home and call me, you know, two or three hours later and say thank you. And that's really great. I'm very, very lucky, very fortunate. How does the fact that you experienced a very traumatic accident in your life years ago help you in understanding what your patients need and the kind of help you can give them? 30, whatever, some years ago when I had a very bad third degree burn and a lot of facial scarring, a lot of keloids, um, looked a complete mess. Uh, not too many people knew really what to do at that time. There's been a tremendous lot of knowledge since then and I have just you know, obviously wanted to get myself straightened out and done whatever was available and as time went on you know there's been more and more things available to help and being in this field, you know, I've stayed in the very forefront of it and um, constantly being on the quest for the newest thing that can help in my situation, which was extensive scarring. Um, so a combination of different things that I have found to use on myself, I can also apply to other people who have various situations and um, it's just been very, very helpful, I think. You know, if you look back now, you've been doing this now for some 30 years, do you still get the same excitement? out of doing it now as you did in the beginning? Oh, absolutely, because there's no burnout in our field like there is in many others. Every year, every six months, there's something new and we keep right on top of it. And I enjoy making people feel better. I enjoy the challenge of the whole skin cancer business. And I like talking to people and being with people. I'm not the type of person who'd want to sit in a research lab all day. And I like the patient satisfaction. We tend to have happy patients. In fact, as one of my patients once said, oh, this is a good feeling. You know, your patients walk in happy and go out even happier. And that's a very rewarding part of our practice. A look at the importance of the care of one's skin and the impact proper medical treatments can have on improving one's overall youthful appearance and self-confidence. I'm Doug Llewellyn reporting from the offices of Abadir Associates in Rybrook, New York. Well, that does it for this edition of Close Up on America's Business. I'm Janice Marie. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.